When it comes to mainstream compact crossover SUVs, nameplates don't get much older than the Honda CRV. This vehicle has been in production since 1997, and since then it has grown to become one of the most popular vehicles in North America, especially with younger families. Now, late last year, Honda introduced an all new sixth generation version of the CRV. I had a chance to drive it out in Southern California. However, this week, as you can see, the company has loaned me for a week the all new CRV and the fully loaded sport touring grade. This generation now goes all in on hybrid because Honda says they expect about 50% of sales of the CRV to be the new hybrid version. So as you can see this week, we're gonna put the CRV through our usual battery of tests. We're gonna live with it for a full week. We're gonna retest the fuel efficiency, the acceleration and the tech features. And I think that at the end of this video, we're gonna find out has Honda made enough changes to the new generation CRV to dethrone the RAV4 as the sales leader? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, before we get started with the review, I wanna give a brief shout out to the sponsor of this video, Stamps. Now, many of you may not realize this, but running a successful YouTube channel requires a lot of behind the scenes work. And this is where a company like Stamps comes in because for the last 25 years, they've been helping businesses like myself save time and money on all your postage needs. With Stamps.com, it's like having your own personal post office in your home office, and all you really need is a computer and a printer. Stamps even sends you a free scale so you have everything you need to get started. What I like about Stamps the most, however, is because I travel about 50% of the time of the year for work, if I need a package to be scheduled to be picked up, I can basically do so on the stamps.com dashboard. And whenever we need to ship our merch, which we sell online, we can always easily do so through Stamps.com. And because Stamps has a close partnership with the USPS, they're able to pass along savings to you, the client, and you can save up to 84% off rates compared to USPS and UPS. So what are you waiting for, guys? Set your business up for success today by going to Stamps.com, where you can take advantage of a free four-week promotional offer by going to Stamps.com forward slash redline. They even give you free postage and a free scale, no long-term commitment or contracts required. Just go to stamps.com forward slash redline. And now let's get back to the video. Now for this all new sixth generation CRV, Honda decided to delete the naturally aspirated engine, which was available in previous generations. Instead, you now get a choice of either a 1.5 liter turbo, which is carryover from the prior generation, or if you guys go for a sport or sport touring trim, the hybrid system will actually be the standard powertrain. Now underneath the CRV's stylish hood, you're gonna find the latest version of Honda's two motor hybrid system, which combines a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder now with direct injection. The engine on its own makes around 145 horsepower and 138 pound feet of torque. It's paired with a two motor hybrid system. So you have a motor, uh, electric traction motor and a generator at the front uh, of the vehicle. There is no separate E-axle at the back. That's what Toyota does. Instead, there's actually a physical connection from the engine and the electric motor to the rear drive uh, shaft, which means this has a more conventional all-wheel drive system. Like I said earlier, the Sport Touring grade comes standard with all-wheel drive. However, the Sport trim you can now get with front-wheel drive, and that's the model that will get up to 43 MPG. Now, most people, I assume, are gonna go with all-wheel drive, uh, which drops the fuel economy to 40 in the city, 34 on the highway. That's basically the same as the prior generation. Your transmission remains in a very interesting eCVT. It's an electronic CVT with a two-stage lockup. It, Honda says it kind of has characteristics of a direct drive transmission when it's in EV mode, and of course a traditional CVT when it's in hybrid mode. The CRV hybrid is now rated to tow up to 1,000 pounds, which is uh, more than the prior generation, but less versus a RAV4 hybrid, for example. And Honda doesn't quote a zero to 60 performance. We got 7.4 seconds in our previous test. We'll test it out again and see what we can get out on our actual roads. Uh, as this car sits, it weighs in at just over 3,900 pounds. So compared to a gas EXL CRV with the turbo engine, the hybrid system adds roughly 300 pounds of additional weight. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, when I first saw the CRV uh, in pictures and in person when they first revealed it last year, I really liked the design. And again, seeing it in person now in my home area in this Canyon River blue metallic color, it's a very dark blue. It's a free color. It's a new color as well. The CRV is definitely a handsome SUV. It's a lot more masculine. It's a lot more aggressive versus the somewhat you know, curvy lines of the prior generation. This definitely just looks a lot more sophisticated. I love the new Honda grille, which is blacked out 
on the Sport and Sport Touring grade. You have the very large Honda logo there where their Honda Sensing is going to be standard. No front camera or 360 camera as you can see, but you do have these integrated parking sensors. That's something the competition offers is a 360 camera. You can see all CRVs come with these full LED headlights with an LED daytime running light and turn signal. You have reflector housings for the LED low and high beams. Honda got rid of the fog lights for this generation. You can see the Sport and Sport Touring grade has what almost looks like an exhaust tip at the front. This is kind of like a silver painted lower front skirt with some functional openings. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design. I think it's really handsome. Some have even said that this kind of looks like the front end of a Toyota RAV4, the current generation. I kind of see it there, but I also see some unique styling elements here with the Honda CRV. Now moving around the side profile, Honda did make this new generation larger. It's built on the existing uh, global architecture that uh, has just been updated basically, but it's the same platform. Honda did stretch the overall length of this car by 2.7 inches at 184.8 inches long. It is longer than the RAV4, for example. Its wheelbase is 106.3 inches long, so that's practically the same. This car is about a half an inch wider, and that's gonna give us a, bigger, a better stance and a little bit more interior space. All CRVs, with all-wheel drive have around 8.1 inches of ground clearance and if you guys want the big wheels this is the trim you want it comes with a 19 inch black finished wheel riding on 235 55 r19 tires you can see the wheel arch trim here is left unpainted but just check out this color guys the way the sun hits it it just shimmers this is definitely a beautiful color but it is very dark when it's not under the direct sunlight this color actually almost looks black so they do offer like a still night pearl a brighter blue a brighter blue i might actually consider that myself but looking at the rest of the side profile here you can see it still very much reminds me of a crv especially when we get to the rear you can see the sport and sport touring grades include black painted side mirrors with integrated turn signals surprised to see that the window trim here is not is not blacked out it's still chrome and if you guys go for an ex and up trim you'll have a standard sun roof. Honda does not offer a panel roof, but they do have these nice black painted uh, slim roof rails. Uh, really sad to see that Honda doesn't offer a panel roof. You can get that on a lot of competitors. But then moving around the side profile of the vehicle, you can see traditional CRV shape, but also kind of reminds me a little bit of a Volvo. A lot of people said that when this car first came out, but there's also some elements of it that still remind me of a CRV. I am sad to see that the turn signal is just incandescent back here as opposed to the LED front, but you do have LED brake lights. This is an LED for the reverse light which is nice. There's a very small all-wheel drive sticker here under the rear wiper. And then back here, you can see there is a lot of badging. So Honda doesn't want you to call this a CRV hybrid anymore, but they still stick a hybrid badge on it. And then you can see the sport badge has a different font than the touring badge. I don't understand why that is. I almost kind of wish that Honda would just delete the badging and instead because it kind of looks like an afterthought. And then the sport trim again includes these nicely integrated rear exhausts tips which are finished into the bumper gives it a cleaner look you can see there is still a traditional rear wiper and you get a subtle little rear lip spoiler here now the sport touring is the only trim that includes a hands-free power lift gate if you go for the exl trim you'll also get a power lift gate but it's not hands-free and then looking at the cargo area honda did improve the cargo space this year you have a little over 39 and a half cubic feet which is definitely around best in class and if you fold down the second row seats which you can't actually do from the rear here you have to actually go to the side and flip those levers that'll increase the space to 76 cubic feet which is pretty good that's among the best in the segment even the Kia Sportage, which is a bigger vehicle, doesn't have more. The sad thing, however, with the hybrid, there, this floor doesn't lift up. It's actually locked down because the electric traction motor or the battery pack lives underneath the cargo floor here. So in the gas only version, you'll have storage underneath here, but you do have storage to the side. But just know that just like the prior generation, the rear floor here does not lift up. So you do lose that storage by going with the hybrid. So let's go ahead and talk about the interior of the all new sixth generation CRV. Before we get inside, I want to show you guys what the key fob looks like. You can see this is the current Honda smart key access system. If you guys go for a base LX, you won't get their intelligent access key, but you will get push button start as standard. That is included when you go for the EX up and trims. Uh, you can see there is remote start on the fob itself. You have your usual lock and unlock and open up the trunk and panic buttons. It's a nice key. It also feels sturdy and it's nice and small. You can also use the Honda Link app through your smartphone if you're an owner of this vehicle. You should be able to ping the car there and remote start it from your actual smartphone. Now you can see the door handles are very conventional. Uh, there's a little area there with three ridges where you can lock the door. Uh, this also has the walk away auto lock feature, which you can turn on and off. When I shut the door, walk away, the vehicles will lock. Uh, if you touch the back of the door handle there, you can see that will unlock the door for you. And then with the Sport Touring grade, I hope you guys like a dark interior because sadly, Honda does not offer any color interior options for the Sport 
or sport touring. It's only black and then you get the leather as standard with the sport touring with the orange contrasting stitching. It looks nice, but I'm really like disappointed that Honda doesn't offer like a beige or a brown leather, for example. I think you should offer those choices because you can get that in the Toyota RAV4. So this is a missed opportunity. And I think that some people, it may be a deal breaker if you don't want a dark interior. Now the seats have been completely redesigned for this new generation. The frame's been redesigned, the padding's been redesigned, and it's also a lot more comfortable versus the prior generation. You have a 10-way power driver's seat with two-way lumbar support, and you have two-person memory. The seats are heated three ways, and you have a heated steering wheel that's included on this trim only. However, no ventilated seats. Despite the fact that there's perforation in the seats, Honda still doesn't offer ventilated seats. They do on the Accord, but it's something that I think they should have included on the CRV. You can see the dashboard has a soft touch injection molded plastic. You have this interesting piano black plastic with this kind of hexagon texture trim in the uh, door panel. Uh, which definitely looks nice. Silver painted accented door handle there. You have padded area here. And then this is also padded with the same orange stitching. The window controls feel very high quality and tactile. I like the silver accents. It's one touch for all four. No power folding mirrors. Down here you can see it's hard touch plastic, but you have good storage. This is also the only model to include the 12 speaker Bose stereo, which I think sounds pretty good. It's nice to see Honda doing a premium branded audio system as before in the past, they only had a Honda premium system. Now getting inside the vehicle with 8.1 inches of ground clearance, it's got a right, really easy step in height. And then when I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, which gives you a great impression of quality. And you can hear that new Honda chime, which is nice. And then when you wanna start the vehicle up, you push this button, which is kind of blocked by the steering wheel. And you can hear the hybrid just kind of whirs to life. There's no traditional startup noise. And then even the top trend of the CRV only comes with their half digital display. So there's a seven inch digital on the left. And then on the right, it's a traditional analog speedometer. Honda offers an all digital display on the Accord as standard, and you can even get on the Civic and on the Pilot on the top trims, but on the CRV, you can't get the fully digital display, which is infuriating, especially considering this is going to be their best selling model, but you can kind of adjust a couple of things here. You can, you know, show a different power flow audio, your different warnings, brightness and stuff like that. So it definitely is easy to read. I'm just surprised that Honda, again, didn't want to do their new all digital display in this vehicle. Now, if you guys go for the EXL or the Sport Touring Grade, you'll also get the bigger nine inch display here, which this includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The system itself is perfectly acceptable. It works well, the graphics are fine. Although I will say that the software behind it is a little bit laggy. Honda has an all new software in the Accord Touring when you guys go for the 12.3 inch display in the Touring trim where it's an Android based Google operating system. Again, it's not available here on the CRV. And if you guys go for the lower trim, you'll have an even smaller seven inch display. So again, that's kind of behind where other competitors offer up to a 12.3 inch display. Now looking at the rest of the dash, you can see it's a soft touch injection molded plastic up here. You have that same kind of really interesting metallic look to the dash vent where it's almost like one continuous piece where these, these little hexagons are in the dash. You have this like nice little dash vent here with this little joystick that adjusts. It also has a nice clicky, satisfying noise when you're adjusting the vents. The climate control, you can see it's a dual zone automatic climate control system. You have three level heated seats. Your heated steering wheel button is over here. The steering wheel itself, I like the leather on the wheel. It feels really high quality. I like the contrasting stitching. I like the paddles, the piano black. Uh, I mentioned earlier, the heated wheel is here. You can see the Honda sensing system is over here. And then the wheel itself also has a manual tilt and telescoping. It offers a good amount of adjustability and range. The horn, oh my goodness, sounds so puny. I'm really disappointed that Honda put this little puny horn on this vehicle. Uh, and then down over here, you can see you have two USB charging ports, a USB-A and a USB-C. Wireless phone charging pad over here. But I will say that this is not a very... Uh, effective wireless charging mat. My phone occasionally will work or won't work. And there is like a little bit of slip on here, non-slip, but I did find that my phone was kind of rolling around a lot when I was driving this vehicle. So um, make sure you try that out, see if your smartphone actually fits properly in there. This vehicle does include an embedded GPS system, which most of you are gonna be using the CarPlay anyways. You can see there's the GPS. It took a little bit of a second to populate, but you can see the map display is perfectly acceptable. It's fine. Although again, if you, most people are gonna be using your smartphone which for some reason the wireless carplay is refusing to connect it was working perfectly until now when i'm trying to film the review uh, but regardless there it goes when it connects you can see it takes up the entire screen and the graphics and resolution also looks pretty good so no complaints there i just want this screen to be bigger there's all this you know room here for a 12 inch display and i think it's a missed opportunity for honda your drive mode selector is over here you can see there are four modes sport 
normal, eco, and snow. Uh, I'll show you guys the different drive modes later on. It also shows you a nice little graphic there when you switch the drive modes. You have a downhill assist control over here for off-roading, which I believe is a new feature. Honda says that they improved the four-wheel drive system. For this vehicle, you have an electronic parking brake, a very traditional shifter too for the eCVT. B mode is for engine braking, max engine braking, which you can also adjust through the paddles here. There's four different levels. Put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera. It has trajectory, it has distance markers, parking sensors, but no full 360 camera. Instead, you just kind of have like a three different views and you also have a cross traffic alert and cross traffic braking. Again, missed opportunity. Some competitors, a lot of competitors offer a full 360 camera. Down here, you can see good storage with the cup holders and storage here and storage over here, which is nice. Padded armrest here, which is also large. When you open this up, you can, it reveals a very deep center console area, uh, which is great for storing things. Um, your 12 volt is over here along with your USB charging ports. I mentioned earlier, the seats are comfortable and supportive. I just wish they offered a different color versus black. So Honda hopefully will rectify that in the future. And then you can see the glove box is a bin style. It's damped, but not lined with felt. It offers a good amount of storage. The mirror you can see is auto dimming, uh, no digital camera re review mirror, which is a nice option in an SUV. The sunroof you can see has a tilt function, or you can also open it all the way or close the sunshade manually. Um, would be nice if they offered a pano, but you do have LED map lighting and you also have sunglass holders here. No LED lighting in the cabin. Again, that's something that I've seen in some other vehicles, but overall the front seat area, it has good space, good visibility, average tech, uh, but it is lacking, you know, features that competitors have, including a heads-up display, but at least it is comfortable and easy to see out of. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat because this is where the CRV also got a huge upgrade in space. You can see opening up the door, it opens up very largely. So this is going to be great if you're a parent and you need to put a car seat back here. The seat back also back here has also been redesigned where the cushioning is different. You also have several different levels where you can recline the rear seat, which is really nice. You can fold it down, which doesn't reveal a completely flat floor. You can see there's a nice hump here, which is kind of an disappointing to see. I believe this is not on the gas version, although I'll have to double check that. But overall, you can see there's another position there. Um, the legroom space, however, is 41 inches. Honda said they added an extra half an inch of legroom, which would make it around the tops in the segment. So getting back here, you can see at somebody who's five foot seven, there is a ton of space to get back here and get comfortable. As I shut the door, you can see there is hard touch plastic here, padded area over here, more of that interesting hexagon texture in the door panel as well. No storage pocket here. You do have one on the passenger side. Luckily, you do have rear seat air vents. That's something you don't even get in like an Integra. Um, and you have two USB-C charging ports. No actual household power outlet, which would have been a nice to have, but at least you have USB-Cs. And then if you fold this down, you can see the armrest has two cup holders and it's very comfortable. So for two people or even three, because the floor is almost completely flat, this is a very practical vehicle. But just know that you can also find this much space in something like the new Hyundai Tucson and Kia Sportage. So here we are back in the fully redesigned sixth generation Honda CRV, the sport touring grade. So this, because Honda decided to go all in on electrified vehicles, comes standard with their hybrid powertrain, their next gen hybrid system with their two motors, uh, electric motor system, which is paired with an eCVT. The last time I drove this vehicle, I was out in Southern California in wine country. And honestly, I found it to be an improvement over the previous generation. The CRV in general, Honda definitely took a much more conservative approach than what I was expecting them to. Uh, and there are certain elements of this car that is nice, but I also find that I don't think it's quite as nice as Toyota's latest RAV4. But uh, when I last zero to 60 tested this vehicle, I got 7.4 seconds. That's when I had Rob in the car with me. We were in uh, a different location. So now I'm back on my usual location here. Uh, and I wanna see what we can do zero to 60 wise on my familiar stretch of road. So the vehicle's in sport mode right now. We're gonna brake torque it and floor it. And when you brake torque it, it will just hold this, the revs up there to uh, basically get the best acceleration. And I just got 7.1 seconds. So it's a smidge quicker than when I first tested this vehicle at 7.4. And in this mode, you can hear the engine doesn't sound very pleasant. In fact, when you don't brake torque, it actually will uh, rev. It'll actually mimic shifts. And I'll try it. I'll try doing another acceleration without brake torquing. You guys will hear the difference. But 7.1 is a perfectly respectable time. It is 
a little bit slower than the last Toyota RAV4 hybrid that I got, which I think did it in 6.7 seconds. So it's almost a half a second slower, but still 7.1 is, you know, nothing to complain about. It is respectably quick and it's gonna be fast enough for most people. But let's go ahead and see what we can do uh, on this stretch here without brake torquing it. I'm just gonna floor it this time. Definitely doesn't feel quite as fast. You can hear it, it's, it's revving and it's like sh mimicking shifts. Significantly slower there, 8.59 seconds. So if you brake torque it, the computer will basically tell the engine or the CVT to not do those fake shifts, which the fake shifts, they sound better, but they are gonna slow down the zero to 60 times. So 7.1 I think is a perfectly acceptable time and the CRV in general, the hybrid system, is definitely improved over the prior generations. Is it better, however, than the Toyota system? I would argue that it's not. Uh, and that's what I noticed after driving this car for a full week and after spending some time with the Toyota hybrid system. Put my foot down here, you can hear. You know, it actually feels like I'm driving a traditional gas-powered vehicle. It almost doesn't feel like a hybrid at all because uh, of the way it mimics shifts, the way the engine sounds. It's an augmented sound because when I switch the drive mode here to just normal, I definitely notice the engine is quieter. Most people are gonna be driving it in normal mode anyways. In sport mode, they're amplifying that fake noise, which doesn't sound good to me, but um, Honda wanted to go with a more traditional feel because the Toyota systems will not mimic shifts like that. So that's something that, you know, if you prefer that feel, that traditional feel, you're gonna like this. However, what I'm noticing right off the bat is the Honda system, the electric motor part of the equation, doesn't feel as torquey off the line. Even though Honda improved the torque feel of this engine or this powertrain for this new generation, the Toyota hybrid system just feels more like an EV. You feel that instant shove when you put your foot down. In this car, I'm constantly hearing the engine rev. I'm constantly hearing it kick on because the electric motor just doesn't seem to have enough power, enough juice to move this vehicle at lower speeds on its own. It needs the assistant of the gas engine a lot more. And you know, I think that's, some, that's an area where Honda could have done a little bit more improvement. I want to see this feel more like electric vehicle. Now, don't get me wrong, this speeds, when I'm just cruising, it will just shut off the gas engine. It'll cruise uh, in EV power alone, which is nice. But let's try one more time here, zero to 60 wise, and see if we can get 7.1 again or faster. I brake torqued it this time, so it's just gonna hold the revs without shifting. Seven seconds there, there we go. So that is the quickest time so far that I've gotten in this car. And it is probably about two seconds faster than the gas only version. So if you go for an LX, you go for an EX or an EXL, that'll only have the turbo 1.5, which honestly is slower this year from the previous generation. See right there, you can feel the, when it, I will say though, when the gas engine does come on, there's not really much in terms of a shutter. You just hear the engine which feels like I'm driving a conventional car. Lovely, I, I like, you know, if you're used to Hondas and you're used to the way their engine sounds, although it's a fake sound, you're gonna really like this um, because it's just gonna feel like you're driving a normal car. What isn't normal, however, is the fact that the CRV offers regen braking. There's four different levels of regen braking that I control via the paddles here. And I have to say, it doesn't give you the full one pedal driving effect, but it is nice because when you go down hills here, you can actually put the transmission into B mode. It'll give you max regen and it will slow the vehicle down and put energy back into the battery pack. It's a small battery pack. This is not a plug-in hybrid. It's only 1.4 kilowatts, but it's kind of nice that it slows you down automatically and you can change the different levels with the paddle shifters here. So that's something that Toyota doesn't do. And I hope the Toyota ends up adding that for their next generation of hybrid systems. Uh, but this is definitely nice. And then you can feel it's now in EV mode. It says it right there on the instrument panel, EV. So as I go down the road here, I put my foot down. Although anytime I just put my foot down a little bit, the gas engine will come on. So that's where I noticed the Toyota hybrid system will give you a little bit more of a threshold before it wakes up the gas engine. So it's just something that you, you when you drive the vehicles back to back, I feel that I think is superior in Toyota's you know, department. But that's not to say the CRV is bad. I prefer this hybrid system over the one that's in the Kia and the Hyundai. So I'm talking about the Sportage and the Tucson. I just think that a stepped automatic, in theory, sounds more appealing to enthusiasts, but a CVT is what's better for efficiency and for acceleration. 
as you guys saw, this is quicker to accelerate than the Hyundai and Kia hybrids as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what Mazda does for their CX-50 whenever the hybrid system comes out, which is technically a Toyota hybrid system. It should make it, again, one of the best systems or one of the best cars in the industry when Toyota or when Mazda finally adds a hybrid version of the CX-50. Now, in terms of comfort, the seats are also very comfortable. Honda redesigned the seats uh, with new frames, new cushioning, new padding, and they're, they have good lateral support, but they're also really plush and nicely padded. I can see out of the vehicle really well. Honda improved the visibility for this new generation, so it's really easy to drive. The ride quality is also smooth and refined in this car. Uh, and in terms of sportiness, the steering is relatively quick and precise. The suspension is soft, but it also feels competent. It feels basically on the same level as the RAV4 XSE or an SE with the sportier suspension tune, but the ride is also good. It's quiet in here as well, aside from the engine making all that noise when you have it in sport mode. So this is an excellent daily driving vehicle and an excellent long distance cruiser. And in terms of sportiness, I'd say it's about average. It's no longer the sportiest vehicle to drive, not like the new Mazdas, like the CX-5 or the CX-50. Um, those are definitely sporter, but the RAV is pretty much on the same level as this vehicle. And in terms of driver assistance tech, Honda Safety Sense, it, it works well. Uh, Honda Sensing is what they call it. The Lane Keep actually works well as well. The Adaptive Cruise works well. Uh, the Blind Spot works well. So that, I have no complaints there. And in terms of fuel economy, this is where I will complain because in my week's worth of testing, I've only been averaging around 32 and a half miles to the gallon in this vehicle. That is perfectly acceptable, but it's far cry of the 37 that the EPA says you should be able to get. And I've been driving the car as efficiently as I can. I've been putting it in eco mode when I can and whatnot. On the highway, I did see it eek up to around 35 miles to the gallon. This is on regular gas. It'll do about 400 to 450 miles on a full tank, which is fine. Uh, but I will say that in my same experience with a Venza hybrid or a RAV4 hybrid, the Toyota was consistently getting between three to five MPG better which again, better is better. And um, this is getting a little bit better gas mileage versus the Hyundai Kia hybrid systems, which was in the low 30s. This is like 33 almost. So again, there is room for improvement here. So I think that Honda has done, you know, a very conservative redo of this vehicle, but I'm surprised they didn't want to give it more horsepower, more torque, you know, more tech features in this car to, you know, to justify the fact that, you know, they are charging a premium, a higher premium for this car, although it is less expensive than some competitors. I just feel that the CRV used to be the class leader. And while this new one is still a very nice, you know, refined, usable family vehicle, it just no longer feels like Honda is trying to be the class leader anymore. Instead, they're just playing a very safe approach here, which is fine for, you know, a lot of people. But I think for a brand that typically innovates, especially in the powertrain department, it seems a little bit like a missed opportunity for me. So after spending a week with the all new sixth generation Honda CRV, this has been one of Honda's top sellers. In fact, last year, the company managed to move a little under 240,000 units here in America. That sounds like a lot. However, when you consider the fact that the company used to do between three to 400,000 units, it's pretty clear that either Honda was dealing with supply chain issues and they couldn't build enough of these vehicles, or a lot of consumers were ending up buying a Toyota RAV4 because Toyota did around 130,000 more units in the same year of RAV4 versus the CRV. So has Honda done enough here to change that for the uh, 2023 model year since this new generation is now out? And I have to say, if you guys had an old CRV, they've definitely improved that model to this model here, especially in the hybrid tech where it gets better gas mileage, it has better acceleration. Uh, the zero to 60 time of seven seconds is perfectly acceptable. It is quicker than some of the Korean offerings and perhaps even something like the Ford Escape hybrid. However, when you look at the RAV4 hybrid, which I still consider to be the benchmark, that vehicle is quicker zero to 60 and it also gets better real world MPG. Now, in terms of the handling and the ride, the CRV is perfectly co competent. It has really easy steering. It has a nice ride quality. It's quiet on the inside. The seats are also very comfortable. The back seat is also huge. The cargo area is large, although you don't get that underfloor storage like you find in some competitors. And in terms of the tech features, while the interior does look nice, the nine inch display is on the small side, even for this segment, the lack of cooled seats, the lack of a heads up display, the lack of a pano sunroof, the lack of a 360 camera are all missed opportunities that I really think Honda should have included. And I know why they probably don't do it because they wanna protect Acura. Those are features that you can get on the RDX, even though technically they don't share a platform and you can't get a hybrid powertrain in the RDX, at least for now. So I think that again, that's a opportunity where Honda should have offered those tech features. And while it would have increased the base price of this vehicle or the pricing, I think people would have paid it because 
The CRV, when it was first launched, Last year, when I had a chance to drive this vehicle in October, there was no LX trim, which meant this car started at around $31,000. Honda has since fixed that because dealers were demanding a base LX trim. So now there is an LX trim available in front or all wheel drive, and it starts at $28,500. So that is a nice starting point if you guys want to get into this vehicle and you're on a budget. The EX trim is the trim you want when you want the sunroof, you want the uh, walk away keyless access system, the power driver's seat. Um, uh, that's that's trim is going to cost you around thirty-one thousand. The sport version, which comes standard with the hybrid powertrain, that's going to be around thirty-two five. So it's about a thousand dollars more than the gas EX. An EXL trim will be a little bit more than the sport. And then in this sport touring grade, this is the trim you have to go for if you want everything. So if you want the uh, Bose premium sound system, for example. Uh, you have to go for this trim. It starts at $39.5. Uh, when you add the destination charge, no other options on this car. Uh, basically, you can just add an option for the color or dealer accessories. My tester here comes to $40,395. So $40,395 definitely is a new you know, plateau for the CRV. And it also makes this thing cheaper versus something like the Mazda CX-50 or the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid XSE, which can be about $3,000 more expensive. However, because the CRV is lacking those features and it isn't quite as fuel efficient as some of those model models, that's the reason why it's cheaper. I think that again, Honda could have charged a little bit more and included those features and improved the power uh, and the efficiency of their hybrid system. So I'll be curious to see what Honda does in the coming years. I don't necessarily know if the improvements that they've made for the 6th gen are going to be enough to dethrone the RAV4 in terms of sales. Toyota sells a ton of those. But if you guys must have a CRV, you have an old one and you want to replace it with a new one, this is certainly still worth a look. But just know that some of the competitors are still innovating a little bit more than Honda does. And that's not something that I say very often. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Honda CRV Sport Touring. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.